So good morning, everyone. So I'm Mark and I'm a uh, third year PhD student from the University of Leeds. So I'm coming close to the end of my uh, studies now. So what I'm going to go through in this presentation today is sort of uh, a little bit of my PhD work. And I'm going to try and sort of focus this on the work I've been doing uh, on, on uh, CSD Crossminer. So this is basically how can we repurpose this tool to be able to aid the design of uh, the of ligands for um, homogeneous catalysis. So just as a quick introduction, as I'm sure we all know that the CSD contains uh, a large wealth of structural data that's both organic and organometallic. And this 3D structural data is very useful for sort of determining uh, the structures of uh, chemical compounds and sort of how they affect uh, different properties. So computational approaches are uh, actually used um, fairly commonly in the development of uh, sort of pharmaceutical uh, compounds, but they're rarely applied for the design of catalysts. So, one example of this is the CSD uh, cross miner software. And this was designed as a tool to aid um, pharmaceutical design. And it does this by sort of um, identifying key sort of structural features in, in compounds and then searching the Cambridge structure database to sort of identify uh, compounds with similar properties. So what I'm gonna sort of go through today is how can we sort of adjust or use uh, CSD cross miner uh, to aid catalyst design and development instead of just this not um, intended application to pharmaceuticals? So for those of you who don't know, the CSD cross miner, as I said, is used to sort of aid the development of pharmaceutical compounds. And you do this by um, sort of highlighting key structural features within your sort of um, uh, molecule of interest. So on the left here, we have examples of, say, um, hydrogen bond acceptors, hydrogen bond donors, and sort of ring planar systems. And what you do is you define these features on your sort of 3D structure, and then you can search the entire uh, Cambridge structure database for similar compounds. And this is basically using structure-based design to um, sort of find similar compounds. So what this aim really was is to can we use this these underlying principles and apply this to um, the design of the ligands for catalysis. So the example I'm going to go through today to sort of uh, sort of uh, demonstrate this is the Elman Goldberg reaction. So this is uh, an important uh, synthetic reaction that is the coupling between. Uh, carbon and uh, nucleophilic atoms such as um, nitrogen or oxygen. And there are two methods to do this. So first is the Elman Goldberg using uh, copper based salts. And the second, which is a lot more common, at least in industry, is uh, buckwood Hartwig cross coupling. But one sort of attractive alternative uh, for using the Elman Goldberg is that um, it's a lot sort of um, because it's a sort of first rate transition metal, it's a lot more readily available. There are sort of less issues with um, uh, toxicity as well. However, it's not used as much because there's a lot of issues with sort of complex stability and the requirement for high ligand loading. So what we aim to see is sort of can we identify new potential ligands that sort of uh, improve the stability of complexes and sort of reduce the uh, the loadings of the, the um, catalyst that we require. And this is also quite an attractive reaction because the ligands used in this reaction are sort of N, O and S donor ligands. And this makes up quite a large proportion of, say, these are organic ligands. So we have sort of about 43% of the CSD's data to draw upon. So to do this, we basically created a structural database uh, for catalysis. So the standard features that are currently available in CrossMiner are sort of those that are sort of more applicable to sort of uh, pharmaceutical development. So these are uh, hydrogen bond donors, hydrogen bond acceptors, and sort of planar ring systems. But this, of course, isn't 
as applicable to Cathartis. So what we needed to do was uh, generate a new set of features that can be used to search with CSD in a different manner. So what we've done is develop a sort of set of um, features to sort of describe common coordinating elements. So nitrogen, uh, oxygen, sulfur based uh, coordinating uh, functional groups. And these are sort of divided into sort of their types. So sigma donors, pi donors and pi acceptors, and as well as uh, going sort of into more individual functional groups as well to give a little bit more selectivity. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to swap over to Crossmine and give you a little bit of a sort of it, uh, quick demonstration. So what I have here is a reference structure for the um, oxidative addition transition state for the Ulm and Goldberg reaction. So what we can then do is we can define sort of a catalophore. So as we would use for a uh, sort of pharmaceutical search, we can define some features for the atom. So here what we've done is defined on our two coordinating atoms for the sort of example ligand we have here. I've defined two sort of points for searching an aromatic nitrogen coordinating atom. And these are projected features that go directly onto the metal center. And this is to ensure that sort of the, the structures that we're finding are in the correct sort of um, geometry to enable coordination. So what I've also done is added two heavy atoms between these two to sort of create a, a five coordinate uh, binding system here. One thing that we also need to look at is sort of how do we define the space of uh, that the um, substrates occupy. So we can do this using excluded volumes. So what I've done here is I've added excluded volumes on all of the atoms for the substrates. So this is our aryl iodide uh, coupling partner and our nucleophile coupling partner. So what I've done here is I've set the excluded volumes equal to the van der Waals radii of each of the uh, base atoms. And this sort of allows the definition of uh, the substrate site. So then what we can do is we can run the search. And if I show the hits here, we can search, search for um, sort of a load of structures uh, in the CSD that sort of have similar structures to the ones we're, we're sort of looking for. So as you can see here, we are able to find a set of ligands that sort of occupy the space around the central metal atom while leaving the substrate space uh, sort of free here. So if we just look at the results hit list, what we get is sort of a, a list of um, sort of uh, similar compounds that match the search query that we set. So if we go back, there's if we want to actually use the structural data, so what we could do is straight up export the 3D structures from Crossminer itself. However, there, when we do this, there's a lack of information that we sort of need to be able to use this to sort of explore the properties of, the, of these catalysts or ligands. So what we can then do is use the CSD Python API to extract more data. So, what, so currently these searches are run through the Python API. And what we're currently able to do with these searches is uh, identify the coordinating atoms. So this is bit extracting the atom indexes in the 3D crystal structures. And this enables us to sort of build structures later on using these ligands to then explore the chemical space. What we're also able to do is sort of remove any duplicates based on small structures. We're able to do sort of more advanced filtering uh, based on sort of molecular weights. So you don't really want to be searching for these really large um, sort of ligand structures that are probably much too too big to be uh, sort of viable in the system, uh, as well as excluding specific elements. So for example, if you're looking at a cross coupling at, uh, reaction that uses sort of um, an aryl iodide or aryl bromide coupling partner, you don't really want ligands that are containing these, these elements and those sort of functional groups, they can cause uh, cross reactions. We can also just sort of define the, the deviations from our, from our catalophor and the structures and the maximum number of hits. And we can also export these structure files to be able to use to, to, to build uh, chemical structures later on and to sort of explore the properties of these ligands. So the next one I'm go, going, going to go on to is how do we use the structure data that we extract from Crossminer? 
So if we go back to our example of the Elman Goldberg reactions, so if we look at the reaction sort of pathway, it's not currently fully understood. So there's four reaction mechanisms that are sort of um, disputed in the literature. So we can sort of look at how can we model these specific pathways to sort of determine which ones are active for specific ligands. So what we can do here is if we want to explore these pathways, we need to sort of build these structures for uh, starting materials sort of A, intermediate B, and then these two transition states here. So the oxidative addition transition state C and a sigma metathesis uh, transition state D. And just for simplicity, we're not going to look at um, the radical base mechanisms. These are a, a lot more complicated. So what we want to look at is how can we calculate the activation energy for these sets of ligands for both transition states, sort of determine which ligands are highly active and also determine sort of which pathway do they go through. And to do this, what we need to do is automate the generation of both of the important intermediates and the transition states. So this includes factors such as uh, how do we deprotonate the ligand structures that we got off, out of cross minor, uh, calculations of the charge and spin of the complexes, and how do we create reliable transition state starting points for doing any computational calculations on. And one requirement also is that we need to use the 3D structure data that we've taken from the uh, chem structure database or other databases. So if you've got like uh, an in-house database that you want to use instead. So for the generation of intermediate structures, so these are the sort of the more stable and non-transition state structures, what we can do is we can start off by defining the metal we want to use. So in our case, it's uh, copper one, and this is a spin zero uh, complex with trigonal planar geometry. And what we can do is we can uh, use Python to sort of generate the structure for us. So what we have is we have our substrates that we take from either an XYZ mol or SMILES format, uh, apply deprotonation rules to it. So in this case, um, in our active catalytic state, the nitrogen is uh, deprotonated. So we want to say, OK, make sure this nitrogen is deprotonated. And then when we add the ligand, which we get out of cross minor, we want to do the same thing. So we can take a set of deprotonation rules that you can define uh, yourself. So either through uh, looking through the CSD and sort of uh, looking at similar structures and say, okay, for these functional groups, do I need to deprotonate or not? And then we can set these rules, add the structure of our ligand in uh, sort of three dimensional or smiles format. And then we can do a quick force field optimization to um, build a starting point structure to do uh, any calculations on. So for these intermediate structures, it's reasonably straightforward, but for transition states, things get a little bit more complicated because we're looking at um, sort of structures with um, sort of distorted uh, bond lengths and bond angles. So in this case, what we do is we start off with um, sort of a template structure. So this is the, the core of the structure. So you may notice that this is the same reference structure that I used in the cross minor search. And again, for this, we can define oxidation state, spin and geometry of the system. And then using the uh, same uh, sort of Python script, what we can do is we can define the atoms that we want to replace. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to replace this uh, phenanthrene ligand. So we can define the identity of these uh, two nitrogens. And what we can do is, again, we can take our structure of the um, ligand we got from cross minor we can define the indexes of the coordinating atoms that we took from the uh, API search, as well as our deprotonation rules. And then we can do a constrained force field optimization. So this is where we freeze this whole uh, transition state side of the molecule and just clean up the ligand side to just get to a more minimum structure. And this is the initial guess that we can use for um, any subsequent transition state calculations. So just looking at success rates, so for the example search that I uh, did, we this is using a very general search term. We're able to identify um, over 14,000 uh, potential ligand structures. 
and we already have the binding modes because this is the same that we've identified from the features from that we defined previously in Crossminer. So when we go through to uh, generate all of the complexes we want to look at, we get um, a successful generation uh, rate of a uh, 99.7%. So what we can do is we can go through, do all of these calculations to sort of determine the activation energy. Uh, I'm not going to go into any of that during um, this talk, but this is sort of output you get out. So what I have here, so we have the two transition states, we have the oxidative addition transition state C and our sigma metastasis transition state D and both quite nice transition states, and we can sort of output an energy diagram. So in this case, we can see for our ligand uh, abival here that um, the transition state for oxidative addition is lower in energy, about uh, 5.9 kcal per mole activation energy. So this is uh, sort of um, an example of how we can use CrossMind to sort of explore the activity of ligands and um, sort of looking at um, reaction pathways. Again, this, you can apply this in any way. So if you want to sort of explore something else with, about complexes, again, you can use the same method, but you can just build different complexes to look at other properties. So just to conclude, what I've shown here is sort of uh, CATSD, which is a feature, da feature database for use in uh, CSD Crossminer that is used to aid the discovery, design and development of um, ligands for um, homogeneous catalysis. And we can do this using the CSD's Python API to sort of to find similar structures within the CSD and extract sort of additional information that we can then use to um, build uh, complex structures to uh, sort of explore properties of uh, organometallic complexes, uh, reaction mechanisms, and predict sort of the activity of these uh, these uh, uh, complexes as well. So just finally, I'd like to thank my uh, supervisors uh, from the University of Leeds and the CCDC, and I'd just like to uh, ask uh, if there are any questions. Yeah, please do far away. Any questions for anyone? For Mark? Oh, yeah. I think the certainly deserves a round of applause. Anyone who's brave enough to do a live demo in a talk gets a, a second clap, in my opinion. <laughs> are there any questions from anyone? A bit of time. Well, I, I certainly have. Um, I've got some observations, actually. Um, so it looks really nice. Uh, I, I think it's uh, really exciting to see um, see the the work, you know, um, CS, the CSD being used in catalyst design in this way. But one logical next step that comes to my mind is, can we use the same approaches, but not to mine the CSD, to mine other things, um, other, uh, you know, so, so it would be fascinating to generate uh, a, um, a cat SD database from conformers of molecules that aren't in the CSD. So we generate those up front and then have some sort of selection criteria. Have you explored that? And what what sort of what sort of caveats do you, do you think you need to apply in that in in, in that scenario? So yeah, I've definitely had a look at it. I haven't had the sort of time to go into it further. So what I did uh, sort of. Uh, consider was okay can we sort of look at ligands that are commercially available in sort of uh, chemical uh, vendors and can we make a, a feature database that contains all of those structures and of course when you do this you also have to consider because cross minor you're defining a very specific geometry for finding the ligands when you make this this database you have to make sure that the structures you put in are in the correct binding mode. So what you'd have to do is you'd then have to say, if you wanted to say, look at, um, say a palladium or ph phosphorus ligands, you'd have to sort of generate um, a complex with say palladium uh, dichloride, sort of optimize it with the ligand in that way, and then remove the palladium and chlorate and chloride ions to sort of get a sort of a, a decent sort of guess of the binding mode that you yeah. can then use as an as an input to say to be to uh, sort of enable easier searching if that makes sense yeah i think so it would be, be an interesting thing to look at uh, in a bit more detail i think but um yeah uh, yeah it's uh, very promising 
Okay. Um, in that case, we'll move on to our, our next presentation. That was an excellent talk, Mark. Thank you very much.